Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmed presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with another very important lecture. We are going to start with part 2 of cell as a unit of health and disease. So, in the previous lecture, we have already read in details about uh, the cell. We have read about the genomics, the histone organization in details and uh, we have also read about the histone modifications and epigenetics. In this lecture, in today's lecture, we are going to mainly concentrate on cellular housekeeping. So, we are going to understand the different compartments of the cell in brief and then we are going to read about plasma membrane structure along with the membrane transport. So, let us uh, begin today's topic of discussion that is the cellular housekeeping. Now, remember just as our body needs to be maintained, so the cell also requires maintenance and cell maintenance is essential for the viability along with the normal activity of the cell. Now, we have to understand one very important thing that the entire cell, it, it is uh, compartmentalized. That means, if this is a particular cell, then there are various compartments, okay? And sometimes compartmentalization is done within a particular organelle, okay? So, the entire cell is compartmentalized, okay, within membrane bound organelles. So, the cell is composed of different kind of organelles which is forming different types of compartment. Okay, What is the import importance of compartmentalization? It is avoiding leakage of injurious degradative enzymes or any toxic metabolites into the cytoplasm. For example, if you see this is a lysosome. Okay, So, lysosome is having lots of degradative enzymes. So, usually, okay, it is, uh, uh, you know, it is uh, limited within the confines of the lysosome. Okay, if such enzymes they come into the cytosol, then it can cause cell lysis and death. Okay, so it is very important to compartmentalize these degradative enzymes. Okay, uh, within the confines of the lysosome. Similarly, similarly, this compartmentalization also provides a unique intracellular environment. Okay, for example, certain environment okay is required to have a lower pH. Okay, for example, inside the lysosomes. The pH should be, uh, you know, around uh, 5 or less than 5. The pH should be acidic inside the lysosome. And this is important for functioning of the enzymes, lysosomal enzymes. Similarly, the pH in the cytoplasm should be neutral. Approximately 7.2 is the expected pH of the cytoplasm for functioning of the cytosolic enzyme. So, that is why unique intracellular environment is possible only via compartmentalization within membrane bound organelles for example the lysosome so so the, this is the first thing and the second thing is sometimes we require increased calcium concentration for example inside the cytoplasm increased calcium concentration is required because it is serving as a secondary signal and it can facilitate various metabolic signaling pathways so this is the reason why a cell needs to be compartmentalized and this compartmentalization is achieved with the help of membrane bound organelles two important uh, you know two important advantages avoiding leakage of any toxic substance or degradative enzymes and to achieve a unique intracellular environment like an acidic ph or increased calcium level uh, so as to carry out the functions of an enzyme or to facilitate metabolic signaling pathways respectively okay now let us see the basic functions in the different compartments if you see the protein synthesis okay and packaging which proteins those proteins which are destined to either bind with the plasma membrane or which are meant for export outside the cell. They are synthesized and packaged okay, in the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus. So, proteins which are meant for the plasma membrane and export, they are mainly synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum and packaged by the Golgi apparatus. Then those proteins which are basically destined to, you know, uh, uh, which are destined uh, towards the cytoplasm, okay, that is proteins which will remain in the cytoplasm of the cell, they are mainly synthesized by the free ribosomes. And what is the function of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Mainly they help in steroid hormone synthesis and lipoprotein synthesis, okay. Now, cells also break down, okay, cells also catabolize or break down wide variety of molecules, okay, that they endocytose, okay, they break and the breakdown of these ma macromolecules occurs at three places. Number one is the proteasomes, number two is the lysosomes and number three is the peroxisome. So, the cell is catabolizing or breaking down any molecule that is endocytosed uh, via three, uh, you know, three points. One is the proteasomes, lysosomes and peroxisomes. So, first we will see, read about the proteasomes. So, proteasomes are degrading the denatured or otherwise those proteins, those cytosolic proteins which have been tagged. For example, they will be tagged by a 
protein called as ubiquitin. So they are degrading any denatured protein or any tagged protein which are mainly cytosolic in nature. Okay, and once this protein is basically degraded or this protein is basically denatured, okay, what is the use? For example, for example, a cell has ingested a particular microbe and then it has broken down the proteins of the microbe and, and that cell for example is an antigen presenting cell. So the antigen presenting cell via the MHC class 1 and 2 molecules can present that particular protein antigen to the respective CD4 or CD8 plus T cell. Similarly, sometimes any degradative proteins okay, which is degraded by the proteasomes, they, the resultant degraded pro product can either stimulate a signaling pathway or it can suppress a signaling pathway. So, this is the importance. So, proteasomes degrade denatured or tagged cytosolic proteins okay, and the function being Sometimes these degraded proteins are presented by the antigen presenting cells to the CD4 plus or CD8 plus T cells via the MHC class 1 or 2 or sometimes these degraded protein products they stimulate or inhibit signaling pathways. The second site where cell catabolism or breakdown of macromolecules occur is at the level of lysosomes. Now lysosome is basically an intracellular organelle okay, and it is containing degradative enzyme. Okay. So, very importantly, they are mainly responsible for carrying out digestion of macromolecules. For example, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, DNA. Not only that, okay, not only that, they are also causing degradation of senescent organelles. Those organelles which have already, uh, you know, lived its lifespan and now they have become old. So, the cell gets rid of them via the lysosomes. And not only that, also the phagocytosed microbes, okay, they are degraded inside the lysosome with the help of formation of phagolysosome. Okay, so this is the function of the lysosome and remember the pH inside the lysosome is acidic. Okay, it is a unique microenvironment and why the pH is acidic because the degradative enzymes present inside the lysosomes are working best at an acidic pH. Thirdly, we are having the peroxisomes where breakdown of very long chain fatty acids occur which is a very important MCQ and during this process of breakdown of very long chain fatty acid, there is generation of hydrogen peroxide as well. Okay. Now, very important one thing is that movement of any organelle present within the cell or movement of any protein within the cell or the movement of the entire cell entire cell in itself. So, either organelle movement or any protein or any macromolecule movement or the entire cell if it wishes to move, this is achieved with the help of what is called as cytoskeleton. So, what are the cytoskeletal proteins? We, uh, that we have, we have the actin, we have the keratin, okay, very important, the most important keratin over here is the intermediate filament and we have the microtubule. So, these are the three very important backbones of the cell cytoskeleton. Now, what is the role of this cytoskeleton? They are responsible for not only the movement of the organelles, proteins and the entire cell, but they are also very important for maintaining the shape of the cell and in maintaining the intracellular organization that is maintaining cell polarity. What is the meaning of cell polarity? For example, if you see any cell is having one apical surface and has a basolateral surface. So, this is an apical surface, this is a basolateral surface. Now, remember one thing that the apical surface is having a different set of proteins, different set of adhesion molecules as compared to the basolateral surface which is having different, uh, you know, uh, uh, set of proteins and molecules, okay, at the basolateral. Now, the functioning of the apical and the basolateral surface is quite different, okay, and it is very important and, and this difference in the functioning of the apical and the basolateral segment, okay, is called as the cell polarity and normally the maintenance of the cell polarity is also with the help of the cytoskeleton. So, what is the function of the cytoskeleton? They are helping in the movement of substances and the movement of the cell maintenance of the cell shape and also in maintenance of the cell polarity okay now atp now just as we uh, as for our survival food is necessary so for the survival of the cell atp is a must atp is essential for cell survival and mainly the major site of atp synthesis is the mitochondria and the major pathway via which the atp is synthesized in our cell is oxidative phosphorylation okay now, not only this, mitochondria is also performing other functions. For example, it is also a source of important metabolic intermediates required for different pathways in our cell. Secondly, they are also used in the synthesis of macromolecules that, that is functioning in our body, for example, the heme. And thirdly, if you see, they also regulate apoptosis. Now, apoptosis is basically a type of programmed cell death 
whenever there is any kind of damage in the cell or when the cell cannot be saved okay or when the repair cannot be you know uh, when the the cell is damaged beyond repair in those situation the cell will trigger cell death by apoptosis okay and very importantly there are two pathways of apoptosis that we will lead one is the intrinsic pathway that is the mitochondrial apoptotic pathway which is the major form and another is the extrinsic pathway also called as a death receptor mediated pathway more in details about apoptosis we will read in chapter number 2 but mainly mitochondria is playing a very important role in the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis so what are the functions of mitochondria oxidative phosphorylation important source of metabolic intermediates synthesis of macromolecules like heme and intrinsic pathway of apoptosis now we are going to understand about the dis the different compartments of the cell okay for example very important the first important compartment is the cytosol which is 54 percent by volume there is one cytoplasm and the role is it is playing an important role in metabolism transport and protein translation okay all these things are taking place in the cytoplasm the mitochondria which is constituting 22 percent by volume 1700 in number is mainly responsible for energy generation and apoptosis synthesis of intermediates as well Rough endoplasmic reticulum is comprising 9% by volume, 1 in number and it is responsible for synthesis of membrane, those proteins which are going to bind with the plasma membrane or those proteins which will be exported. So, they are responsible for synthesis of plasma membrane as well as export protein. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus, okay, they are uh, basically comprising 6% and they are 1 in number. Mainly their function is protein modification, sorting and catabolism. Mainly these, these are the functions of Golgi apparatus. If for smooth endoplasmic reticulum as we have seen, they are responsible for uh, steroid hormone synthesis and lipoprotein synthesis. Nucleus, they are, uh, you know, making 6% by volume is uh, 1 in number and nucleus is responsible for cell regulation proliferation as well as dna transcription okay endosome comprising one percent there are 200 in number responsible for intracellular transport as well as export okay so whatever substance are coming or ingested inside the cell it is via endocytosis and then they are basically deriving the membrane from the plasma membrane and they are forming an endosome okay so they are helping in intracellular transport as well as export Whereas the lysosomes, if you see again, they form 1% by volume and there are 300 lysosomes in a cell responsible for cell catabolism. They contain the degradative enzymes functioning at an acidic pH. Okay. They help in degradation. Okay. And peroxisomes, if you see, they are forming 1%. They are responsible for metabolism of very long chain fatty acid and in the process, they are synthesizing H2O2 and they are 400 in number. So, with this, we have discussed the basics of cell housekeeping. Now, we are individually going to discuss each and everything. First, let us start with the plasma membrane. Now, the plasma membrane, if you see, it is a fluid bilayer comprising of phospholipids, cholesterol and proteins. So, if you see, it is a lipid bilayer and it is having two important regions. Okay, One is the outer or you can say on the outer aspect, there is a hydrophilic head group which is facing the aqueous environment this is the hydrophilic head group which is facing the aqueous environment and we have a hydrophobic lipid tail okay this is the these are the lipid tails okay which is forming a barrier to passive diffusion passive diffusion to large polar molecule or any charged molecule okay so it is having a hydrophilic head group Okay, which is facing the aqueous environment and a hydrophobic lipid tail forming a barrier to the passive diffusion to large or charged molecule. Now, the phospholipid distribution in the plasma membrane is asymmetric. What is the meaning of that? Those phospholipids which are facing on the outer aspect of a cell and those which are facing towards the inner aspect of the cell are not the same. That is why the phospholipid distribution is asymmetric. So, which are the phospholipid which is facing outside? So, these are phosphatidylcholine, sphingomyelin, glycolipid. So, these three are facing outside, okay? Whereas the ones which are facing inside or they are cytoplasmic facing, they are phosphatidyl ethanolamine, phosphatidyl serine. And there are such phospholipids which are present on both the surfaces, both on the outer side and towards the cytoplasmic side. They are phosphatidyl inositol as well as cholesterol. So, 
So if we look at this particular diagram, okay, this is the basic phospholipid bilayer as we can appreciate over here. Then we are having this uh, hydrophilic head and we are having the hydrophobic tail area. Okay, Over here, we can see that on the outer side, we are having phosphatidylcholine, sphingomyelin. Along with that, we are having glycolipids as well. And towards the inner aspect, if you see, we are having phosphatidylethanolamine and phosphatidylserine. And if you see, certain proteins are present on both the surfaces as you can appreciate this phosphatidyl inositol is present at both the surface and even this cholesterol is present at both the surface. This is the cholesterol and this is the phosphatidyl inositol. Now we are going to see the individual functions of these phospholipids. So if you look over here, the phospholipid over here, okay, the phosphatidyl inositol, it is acting as a support for intracellular proteins as a scaffold for intracellular proteins and very importantly it is responsible for generation of secondary signals like diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate which is helping in secondary signaling inside the cell so it is helping in the generation of diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate they are serving as secondary messengers and helping in secondary signaling within the cell Second, we are having phosphatidylserine. What is the function? They are conferring negative charge on the inner side of a cell, number one. Number two, if you see, if the phosphatidylserine from the inner side, if they go towards the outer side, then they are giving an eat me signal to the cell and they are going to trigger apoptosis. So, what do I mean to say that normally the phosphatidylserine is towards the inner side. If by any chance this is being translocated on the outer surface, then it is giving a signal, eat me. And this is going to trigger apoptosis of a particular cell. Okay? Then we are having glycolipids and sphingolipids as we can appreciate over here. Okay? We are having the sphingomyelin and we are having the glycolipid over here which is present on the outer surface. They are again providing negative charge to the cell and very important, they are playing an important role in inflammatory cell recruitment as well as in sperm egg fusion. So, these are the functions of the different phospholipids as we have already seen and this is the distribution of the different phospholipids that we see. Now, if you see over here, there is one portion that is called as a lipid raft. Now, these are quite specialized domains and which are specialized to perform a certain function. For example, this lipid raft, they contain a very high concentration of sphingolipids and glycolipids. Okay, Sphingomyelin and glycolipid, they are present at increased concentration and it is the site and it, it is at this site of the lipid drop that usually caviolin mediated endocytosis occurs. So, we will discuss more about this in the later half of the video. So, there are certain specialized domains called as the lipid drop. They are having increased concentration of cholesterol along with glycospingolipids. So, both spingolipids and glycolipids are increased along with that they have increased concentration of cholesterol along with glycospingolipids. And what is a very important function? They are helpful in maintaining intracellular protein-protein interactions that is the tide junctions they are maintaining and this is helpful in maintaining the cell polarity. Not only that, they are also helping in membrane transport. We are going to discuss about that in details Okay, when we read about membrane transport. Now, such a membrane organization, it is impacting protein distribution. It is, it is also impacting how there will be cell to cell interaction or cell to matrix interaction, intracellular signaling along with that sites of vesicle budding or fusion. So, all these things are decided or impacted by the plasma membrane organization. Okay? Now, not only the phospholipid that we have read, but also the plasma membrane is studied with proteins as well as glycoproteins. Okay, So, what is the function of these proteins and glycoproteins? Now, these proteins which are present in the plasma membrane are playing an important role in ion and metabolite transport, fluid phase and receptor mediated uptake of macromolecules, cell to ligand, cell to matrix or cell to cell interaction. So, they are playing an important role in ion and metabolite transport, fluid phase and receptor mediated uptake of macromolecules, cell to ligand, cell to matrix or cell to cell interaction. All of these are facilitated by the variety of proteins studied on the plasma membrane. Now, the type of protein membrane inter interaction means how the protein is interacting with the plasma membrane is going to affect the function of that protein. For example, certain proteins, for example, if you see, this is the transmembrane protein which is spanning across the entire length of the phospholipid bilayer. So, these are basically acting as pores and they are helping in transport or in membrane transport. Okay? So, they have an important role of membrane transport whereas others are superficially attached proteins. For example, you see over here 
there is a GPI linked protein on the outer aspect, there is a cytosolic protein on the inner aspect, there is a lipid linked protein also on the inner aspect. All these are associated mainly with cellular signaling. Okay? Okay. Now, the plasma membrane protein, if you see, they can also function as a large complex. What do you mean by that? For example, uh, there are certain plasma protein that might come together that might for example one unit and this two unit might come together and they might dimerize okay they will join together to form a duplex component this is a one complex that is they can dimerize or sometimes there will be three of them together to form a complex or they can trimerize and once they dimerize or trimerize to form a large complex they become functional and they help in cellular signaling okay so this uh, you know this method okay the process by which the this complex formation this dye and trimerization is taking place it is either chaperon mediated in the rough endoplasmic reticulum or it can form by lateral diffusion along the plasma membrane followed by complex formation in situ that means for example one protein is here one protein is here so laterally they might diffuse towards each other they might join and within the plasma membrane they might form an active complex okay and then they might perform their particular function okay now there are different mechanisms by which the proteins are going to associate with the lipid bilayer as i have already shown you one is by the integral or transmembrane variety of, of proteins, okay, which is traversing across the entire lipid bilayer that we have already seen. This is the first kind of interaction that we have seen. Then uh, those proteins which are synthesized by the free ribosomes, okay, they are basically, you know, they are destined to stay in the cytoplasm and post-translationally they are modified by the addition of prenyl group or fatty acids, okay and they remain in the cytosolic side okay they remain in the cytosolic side so for example we can see this cytosolic protein okay this was basically synthesized in the free uh, uh, you know by the free ribosomes and they were post translationally modified by the additional of prenyl groups or fatty acids and they remain on the surface but towards the cytosolic side so these are the cytosolic protein this is one form of interaction also sometimes the proteins are present on the extracellular side okay these are called as gpi linked protein as you can appreciate this gpi linked protein they are present on the outer side this is the outer side and this is the cytoplasmic side okay so these proteins which are towards the outer side they are called as a gpi linked protein sometimes you might also have a lipid linked protein towards the cytoplasmic side as well and sometimes peripheral membrane proteins by means of non-covalent linkage might give rise to transmembrane protein as well. So, with this we have completed in details about the plasma membrane structure. Now, we are going to start and we are going to discuss about membrane transport in details. Now, there are five different types of membrane transport. Number one, we are having passive transport. Okay. Then we are having carriers and channels endocytosis exocytosis okay and then we are having transcytosis so we are going to discuss each one of them in details so let us begin with passive diffusion now if you see passive diffusion is basically a kind of diffusion that is occurring along the concentration gradient and no energy is required for this process so which are the molecules that can cross this lipid bilayer Number one, we are having small non-polar molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide, that is the gases. Then we have lipid soluble substances like the hydrophobic molecules like the steroids, example vitamin D and estradiol. Now certain polar molecules which are small in size, how much small? Less than 75 Daltons, okay? Like for example, water which is 18 Dalton, they can pass at a low rate, okay? And such movement is classically seen in the renal tubular epithelium via aquaporins okay now which molecules cannot cross the lipid bilayer they are large polar molecules more than 75 daltons in size and charged molecules that is the ions they cannot cross the plasma membrane now, next we are having carriers and channels now these are basically for the charged molecules that is the ions and larger molecules that were not able to cross the plasma membrane for example the sugars nucleotides etc now, the carriers and channels, they are facilitating the movement of the molecules across the plasma membrane and also across the organellar membrane. Very importantly, these are quite specific. What do you mean by specific? For example, uh, uh, you know, uh, the 
carriers or the channels for glucose okay will not allow galactose to pass through and vice versa now what is the basic point of difference between channels and carriers now channels are going to allow passive transport of molecule whereas carriers for the major part allows active transport so whenever the the passage of a molecule is required against the concentration gradient okay energy is required and that is basically provided with the help of carrier molecules okay now channels provide rapid movement of solutes which are size and charge restricted okay whereas carriers provide slow movement of molecules and it is brought about by sodium potassium atpase and mdr protein that is multi drug resistant protein okay now we are going to understand the function of these carriers with the help of this example normally the concentration of sodium is more on the outer side of the cell and the concentration of potassium is more on the inner aspect of the cell normally some amount of sodium they are always leaking inside the cell some amount of sodium is always leaking inside the cell and as you know sodium is osmotically active so it is also going to attract water now this is going to cause overhydration of the cell okay and ultimately if no measures are taken then ultimately the cell will burst and die so normally okay normally this is prevented with the help of a very important pump that is sodium potassium atpase pump and this pump as we have seen it is an example of a carrier molecule okay and mostly they are basically throwing three sodium ions outside and two potassium ions inside and because this movement is against the concentration gradient it is requiring atp or energy is required for this process similar mechanism is also available to maintain the concentration of other ions like the calcium and hydrogen ions now if you look at the hydrogen ions it is very important the concentration of hydrogen ion is very important in cell maintenance how if you see the cytoplasm needs to be maintained at a ph of 7.4 because the cytoplasmic enzymes they function best at this ph whereas if you see the lysosomal environment needs to be maintained at a ph of 5 or less that is they should be acidic because the lysosomal degradative enzyme is mostly function at this particular temperature next we are going to read about endocytosis now endocytosis is defined as the uptake of fluid and macromolecules by the cell now there are basically two types okay one is pinocytosis that is defined as cell drinking and one is phagocytosis that is defined as cell eating now basically phagocytosis is also a type of endocytosis only which is characterized by the uptake of microbes okay and they are carried out by only special cells like the neutrophils or the macrophages okay but on the truest sense if you see endocytosis is divided into two types number 1 is caveolin mediated endocytosis and number 2 is receptor mediated endocytosis first we will discuss about the caveolin mediated endocytosis So first of all over here the plasma membrane is forming an invagination or a depression just like a cave and this is called as a cavioli and this depression or a cave or the cavioli is studded with multiple proteins that is called as caveolin now this cavioli uh, encircled bound macromolecules that has entered okay along with this cavioli they can either you know fuse to form the endosome or they can be recycled back to the plasma membrane okay mainly they are responsible for you know transport of transmembrane transport of uh, of folates mainly and also in transmembrane signaling so let us first read about cavioli mediated endocytosis okay so this is basically the cavioli as i already mentioned they are nothing but the little caves okay and they are nothing but they are representing plasma membrane invagination that is the meaning of cavioli and the associated protein that is shown over here in green as you can appreciate this is called as the caviolin this is called as the caviolin now internalization of cavioli with the bound molecules and the ecf okay this process is called as potocytosis which is also called as cellular sipping now subsequently this particular cavioli is going to fuse with the endosomes this is the first outcome or it might recycle back to the plasma membrane so what are the functions that they carry they are mainly responsible for transmembrane delivery of folates they are also responsible for transmembrane signaling as well as cellular adhesion and it occurs in areas of lipid drafts if you remember these are specialized domains which is containing increased concentration of cholesterol and glycosphingolipids as we have already uh, read before and they are also responsible for maintenance of cell polarity the lipid drafts as we have already read about that okay 
So with this, we have completed the discussion on cavioli mediated endocytosis. That was the first variety of endocytosis. The second very important variety is the receptor mediated endocytosis. As we can appreciate over here, in this variety, an invagination is also there. There is a pit. Okay, and they contain several receptors as we can appreciate which is bound with the macromolecule over here. Okay, now these receptors along with this macromolecule, okay, they are going to be internalized and on the outer aspect they are coated, they are coated with clathrin. So these when they are forming, they are endocytosed inside, they are forming what is known as clathrin coated vesicle as we can appreciate. Then these are going to, uh, you know, transform into what is called as an early endosome, wherein the pH is going to fall and later on they will form the late endosome. This late endosome will then fuse with the lysosome to form lysosome late endosome fusion. Now in the process, whatever receptors is there, okay, the receptors are going to, you know, free whatever macromolecules are there and they are going to get recycled back to the plasma membrane, okay. And the lysosome also, okay, after it performing its function, they are also going to get reconstituted. So, let us read about the receptor mediated endocytosis. So, over here the macromolecules, they are bound to the membrane receptors, okay. These are for example, transferrin receptor, okay, which is basically binding with iron and we are having the LDL receptors which are mainly binding with the cholesterol, LDL receptors which are mainly binding with the cholesterol. So, the macromolecules bound to these membrane receptors are taken up at the specialized region of the plasma membrane which is called as clathrin coated pits. As I have already mentioned, these are receptors, they might be LDL receptor, they might be transferrin receptor, they might uptake the cholesterol or iron respectively, okay. So, they will be, uh, you know, so they are taken up inside and they form clathrin coated pits, okay. So, they are basically taken up at specialized region of the plasma membrane which is called as clathrin coated pits, okay, as we have seen. Now, these receptors as we see, they are internalized by membrane invagination which is driven by the association clathrin matrix pinching off as clathrin coated vesicles, okay. So, as you can appreciate that they are pinching off and they are forming clathrin coated vesicle over here, okay. And, and basically this outer aspect, we can appreciate this brown colored substance, this is nothing but the clathrin, okay. This is helping in pinching off and formation of clathrin coated vesicle, okay. Now, at the stage of the early endo remember the clathrin coating is lost at the stage of early endosome it is lost okay now also trapped inside these vesicles okay along with the receptors and the macromolecules the cell is also gulping the extracellular fluid and this is known as fluid phase pinocytosis okay now the vesicles rapidly they will lose the clathrin coating and they fuse with the early acidic endosome as we can appreciate over here so the vesicles they lose their uh, you know they lose their uh, clathrin coating as we can appreciate this clathrin coating is lost and then they fuse with the early endosome okay where the ph is less now after some time, they are going to form the late endosomes and finally, they will fuse with the lysosomes which is going to degrade the content and they will cause release of these molecules into the cytoplasm, okay. Now, remember that this in the early acidic uh, stage of the endosome only, the LDL receptor, so whatever receptors were present, whether it be the LDL receptors or the transferrin receptors, okay, these were recycled back to the plasma membrane invagination, okay. And at this stage, they release their cargo, okay. So, LDL receptor will release the cholesterol and transferrin receptor will release the iron, okay. And these are then degraded by the lysosomal enzymes, okay, and then they will be transported to the cytoplasma, okay. So, this is how receptor mediated endocytosis occurs okay this is all about that okay next we are going to read about what is called as exocytosis so the macromolecules which are exported from the cells towards the outer aspect is called exocytosis so for example all the proteins which are synthesized and packaged in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the golgi apparatus they form secretory vesicles which is fusing with the plasma membrane and they are expelled out this process is called as exocytosis for example, peptide hormones and in, uh, like insulin and cytokines which are basically you know uh, 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 secretory proteins which are exported outside the cell, they are basically transported by the process of exocytosis as we can appreciate. So, this process of receptor recycling wherein the uh, vesicle is going out and fusing with the plasma membrane and expelling out its content, this is called as exocytosis as we can appreciate over here also, expelling out of the content, this is known as exocytosis actually, okay. Now, 
uh, very importantly last type of transport that is transcytosis it is the movement of endocytosed vesicles okay okay between the apical and the basolateral compartment of a cell so if you can appreciate over here transcytosis we can appreciate okay so some molecules usually the large molecules they are taken up okay and this is the apical area okay this is the apical area and this is the basolateral surface okay so basically it is facilitating the movement of molecules from the apical to the basolateral surface very importantly it is involved in the transport of large amount of intact proteins across the epithelial barriers okay and basically these are ingested antibodies which are present in the mother's milk okay they are also allowing for rapid movement of large solute volume they are also allowing for rapid movement of large solute volume so this is all about transcytosis as i already mentioned before phagocytosis is the type of endocytosis which is specific for microbes and dead cell fragments okay it is helping for clearing out these agents and they occur in specific cells only that is the neutrophils and the macrophages so as you can appreciate over here the process of phagocytosis so over here there is an intake of microbes so this is basically a microbe either a microbe or a degraded material is there okay so that is basically internalized by phagocytosis and then they, it will lead to the formation of phagolysosome and then there will be a degradation of the content inside the phagosome now this is specialized and it occurs only at the level of neutrophils and macrophages okay so with this we have completed the different types of endocytosis now one very important point in relation to the receptor mediated endocytosis that after the release of the ligand from the receptor for example cholesterol is leaving the ldl receptor or after iron is relieving uh, is releasing the transferrin receptor so after that okay some of the receptors they are recycled back to the plasma membrane and they are reused this occurs for example as we have seen in case of transferrin receptor and ldl receptor okay now in many situations you will see that sometimes there is mutation at the level of the ldl receptor in that condition it leads to what is known as familial hypercholesterolemia and sometimes okay sometimes the receptor is not recycled instead the receptor is degraded within the lysosome this occurs in case of epidermal growth factor receptor or egfr receptor okay and via this it leads to decreased receptor mediated signaling it leads to decreased receptor mediated signaling okay now endocytosis and exocytosis remember in one process for example in endocytosis the 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 plasma membrane is losing itself okay the cell is losing the plasma membrane material because anything that that is coming inside is going to take a part of the plasma membrane and they are going to come inside similarly in process of exocytosis okay any material that is going out of the cell okay so in that situation what is going to happen that the content over here is basically adding to the plasma membrane okay so one process the plasma membrane is lost and in exocytosis the plasma membrane is gained so so this process should be tightly balanced with each other okay because if excess amount of either of this will occur it will cause large changes in plasma membrane volume so both these process should be tightly balanced to avoid large changes in plasma membrane area with this we have completed the membrane transport in details thank you very much for watching this particular video and do share like and subscribe